now that we've looked at what the DBE um, 2023 PET Phase 1 was asking of us, we looked at the topic, you know, things like that, just having a good overview of what it's asking from us. Let's now have a look at Phase 2. So as I scroll through my document, and again, this is the document that all of you should have. Just remember that for phase two, we're now talking about processing data and information. We've got a maximum of 44 marks up for grabs, and that means it is a massive 29% of your total pet. So let's check out the overview of the tasks that we need to do in phase two. So there they tell us, phase two, design and implementation of suitable tools for capturing and analysis of data. They want us to draw up and conduct a questionnaire or survey. They want us to design and use a spreadsheet and a database to analyze the survey results. Which survey results are they talking about? These over here. So you are going to have to draw up a questionnaire give it out to people, whether it's your fellow classmates, whether it's whoever, you can use a Google form as well. The beauty of the Google form is when you are done with it, you can turn those results straight into a spreadsheet. And then the idea is to take the spreadsheet and um, turn that into a database as well. And then they want you to continue refining the final report as needed and then hand in phase two. Right, so these are the details in terms of phase two then we're going into much more detail and then we're going to check out that rubric so again creating the questionnaire you need to now collect data and information that will help you answer your research questions the ones that you created in phase one the questions in the questionnaire should help you gather data and information regarding people's perceptions or experiences in other words info not likely to be found in other sources okay um, they mentioned here, create a questionnaire in a word processor and either uh, email it, send it out. You can use, I know we have used before the, um, the Google form as well. You'll just have to um, keep the link as proof and maybe just take a screenshot of it as well. Then printing and distributing copies, creating an online version. There they mention editable PDF document, Google form, survey monkey, any of those um, that will help you do that. Now, when it comes to that, you must have at least five questions excluding the biographical data. So I'm going to give you um, an example of someone from a few years back, just so you can see. This is obviously an electronic form created in Word using our legacy tools, you know, where we can go and mark things off. So the fact that you're asking for the person's name, age, gender, that is not part of the five questions. That's why you see it's not numbered here. However, these are questions and you can see these are closed questions, which means that we just wanted to get yes or no answers or we, we want to give them options that they can choose from. The reason for that is it makes it so much easier when you turn this into um, or when you want to try and process it into information, you know, in terms of graphs, um, your your database queries, things like that. So here's a typical example. I think this person had like 10 questions and you can see it's all closed questions. But that's basically what you're looking. You want to find out from people things like, do you know what online collaboration tools are? Um, do you realize that this is on the list for the future? Have you even heard of it? So these are the kind of things that you will be um, asking. Okay, so that is our questionnaire. That's the first thing you need to create. Ensure all the questions are relevant. Try to create questions where people can choose an answer. That's exactly what I said now. Okay, um, it's obviously gonna have a good layout to it. People must be able to interpret it very easily. And here we go. It's a good idea to get other learners to test your survey to see whether it's easy. Remember that you should have at least 25 respondents. So you must have 25 people having done or completed these surveys, questionnaires, Google form, whatever you're going to be using. So please, it's got to have a minimum of five questions and it's got to be or have 25 respondents. Right. That's the questionnaire. Now, we need to identify data suitable for spreadsheet processing, identify data suitable for database processing. 
and they give us um, a few guidelines in terms of that. Uh, I just want to go down. Okay. For the spreadsheet, they want you to create a meaningful spreadsheet or spreadsheet with a meaningful file name. So don't just call it spreadsheet. <laughs> okay. You want to then capture, import, or copy any of the suitable data found uh, which you sourced in phase one that you need to process and data from your questionnaire to the spreadsheet. Please bear that in mind. Capture, import, or copy any suitable data that you sourced in phase one that you need to process and the data from the questionnaire. So it's not just taking the questionnaire's info. So if I look at, again, an old phase two, this is a bad example of a phase two, but it gets the job done. Um, this person put their, their questions that they had as headings and then filled in all the relevant info under that. Remember, this is now all data. We just put in it in a decent layout. Um, you will get marks for things like formulas, etc. But I'll go through that as we go along. Okay, design and format of your spreadsheet should be user friendly. And they want you to use at least some formulas. And here they give you um, the example, please people use this. Okay, and you're going to see why. So level one, these are the functions level two, and they say here, use at least one from each level given on the next page so they are encouraging you encouraging you to use one 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 right to get the maximum marks then they want you to summarize the results on a separate worksheet so if i've got this over here then on a separate worksheet you can name that summary, you can name that summary of details, whatever you want to, but the summarized version of all the data that you popped in has to be on a separate worksheet. Okay, then they say um, appropriate meaningful graphs. Okay, that's fine. And then we save the spreadsheet in our phase two folder. So in the phase two folder, we've got the questionnaire, we've got the spreadsheet, and then we are going to create a database as well. Now look at the database. You need to have a table. So let's see if I have an example here. Should have an example here. Okay, this is just, again, not a great example of a table, but this is what the person handed in. So also bear in mind that they want you to create a database with a meaningful file name. They want you to save it in the phase two folder. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the table needs to have at least five fields. At least one table must be created with suitable data for the database, not a direct import from the spreadsheet. So you can't just take the spreadsheet and just say, boom, import that whole thing. No, um, the table must contain five fields. As we said, all, all fields must have appropriate meaningful names. That's fine and make sure they contain single data units. So again, if I look at what I had earlier, so even if I use this bad example, <laughs> you'll see there I have my names now. There are certain things that shouldn't be here. Um, what are they saying to me? All uh, make sure that all fields contain single data units. In other words, name, just name, surname, just surname, not like name and surname and then everything. So single units of data um, inside there. And then they want you to use appropriate components or properties to ensure and promote accurate. In other words, when I go into my design view, you know, have I put certain things in place? For example, gender, M or F, um, surname, maybe limiting that to uh, 25 characters, you know, name limiting that. If I've got somebody's cell phone number, you know, changing that format as well so um, that is what they are referring to okay then they say now with that they said the table must contain at least five fields remember these are my fields on top here and name surname gender they don't get included as that and then you need to have at least 20 relevant records. So 20, you should have 20 records down here and at least five fields on top over there. 
Right, then what else do they want? They want us to create at least three queries. I'm going to say it again, at least three queries that provide information that is meaningful or relevant. Okay, and um, they would like the query also to show some complexity. And here are your four levels similar to um, Excel. If you're using level one only fields with one simple criteria, um, this one might have more, it might use different ones, calculated fields, grouping. Um, so please do try when you create your query or queries um, to use a combination. If you want the maximum marks, you're going to use one from each one of these levels. Okay. So you created your database report to so provide information that is meaningful or relevant to the task um, to process data and answer any data related questions posed in phase one. Now, this report, right? This is in your database. They want one report. It must be sorted according to one field, grouped according to one field and contain one calculation. If you're not sure on these things, please check out my other videos. I show you how to sort, group, um, and add in a calculation. Um, usually that calculation will go into the footer or the report uh, group section. So just check on that. Okay, so I'm gonna go through this again. Let's just check our hand in now. Um, okay, also you're working on your report. Now remember this is the Word document that you used in phase one, right? Um, you, you created that, you're gonna copy and paste that into your phase two folder, and now we're going to be adding to that because we're working on this so that when we get to phase three, we actually have a, a, a Word document that is basically going to be a report of everything. So you're gonna take the relevant um, information and data that you got, the, the results, the summaries, and pop it into that report. Um, where you put in everything together and, and you're going to put this under the heading find it but we'll get to that in phase three so for phase two you have in a phase two folder you are going to submit obviously that whole copy to your teacher but in that folder you should have the original questionnaire you designed a minimum of 25 completed answered questionnaires you're going to have the completed spreadsheet the completed database with remember five fields in your table and 25 um, sorry 20 records you're gonna have three queries you can have a report and then you're going to be updating your word document report with your graphs um, under the findings section okay and then we're gonna copy that report that we've now updated from phase one it's now in phase two and we're gonna pop that into the phase three folder right let's now jump to the rubric for phase two okay so if your questionnaire has clear instructions relevant questions enable the process and you've got 25 completed questionnaires you get your four marks um, the technical aspects of it you comply with that you get your four marks look at this created electronically appropriate questions professional formatting at least five questions guys if you do that easy four marks this is this is, this is an easy eight marks okay that's just the questionnaire then your spreadsheet do you have a separate worksheet for results well designed doesn't have to be the most professional right but just a well designed layout well formatted easy to read not multi colors all over the place and huge fonts and things like that no man we don't need that you're going to get your four marks is the data suitable is it relevant um, have you done some processing and analysis of the data have you used functions right have you used the correct functions in the correct place you're going to get four marks have you used graphs now there they say at least two graphs that are relevant with a heading labels legends etc so two proper graphs if i can put it that way and then when it comes to the complexity and the calculations what have you used and you can see if you've used one from all four levels then you get your four marks okay so it's entirely up to you 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 know if you're going to comply with that it's fine 
Then your database. Now I know some of you struggle here. So let's say for argument's sake, you do well in the Word and Excel section and you're not so clued up with database yet. Have a look at this. If you've created a table, it's got five fields. The fields are appropriate with their names. The fields contain single data units. You will get your four marks. If I use this as my example, at least one table created. Have I created a table? Yes. Table contains five fields. Do I have that? Yes. All fields have appropriate meaningful names. Yes. All uh, fields contain single data units. Um, they don't because some of these contain more. Um, so you might only get like two or three marks there. But can you see, even though this is a bad example and it's not ideally what you should have, um, you're still going to get marks. All text fields are set to an appropriate size. This is. There's at least one validation rule. Okay, I'll have to check in design view. At least one combo box. I don't see a combo box here. And at least one input mask. So you see, for me just doing that, I'll get my four marks. Then, do I have 20 records? Okay, let's say this one had 20 records. Yes. At least one real now you see this is where the three queries come in. So then I put my three queries in. This one didn't even have half a query. <laughs> then the complexity of the queries. And then look at this for the report. If you just create a report and you don't do anything else, you'll still get a mark for it. If you sort it according to one field. Now remember, this sorting and grouping you can do when you create the report. So there's no reason why you shouldn't get the three marks. You use your report wizard and you'll get those marks, guys. I know the calculation some of you struggle with. So even if you leave that out, you, you, you are guaranteed three marks here if you follow the um, rubric and if you follow that report wizard. And that is how we get our 44 marks from phase two. There is no reason, I say it again, there is no reason why you should be getting bad marks or low marks for a pet. Everything is here. The guidelines, the rubric, it's in detail everything you need to do. If you um, are not sure of anything, go check out the videos on my channel, um, leave a comment, tell me what you're struggling with, and let's see how we can help you get the best marks possible.